Okay, so maybe I don't know who would like to start if you have already got any ideas or spontaneous reactions. Well, I, I had a few, um, I had a few thoughts on on the on the relationship of of, of basic income and degrowth, um, uh, which I know is, is is the subject of this session, uh, which I, I, di I didn't address in my talk. I'm sorry about that. I mean, what what would be the effect of a, of a basic income scheme on growth? Um, it's not clear. I mean, it might inhibit growth uh, by, by reducing the incentive to work. So I if all adult citizens are in receipt of, um, let's say, 10,000 euros a year, um, they, they may, may well choose uh, to, to work part-time or perhaps even not to work at all. Um, and that, that you know, might have a, have a degrowth effect. Um, but I mean, you, you have to offset that against um, another effect, uh, which is that ba I mean, basic income would, would eliminate uh, the, the, the unemployment traps that you, you currently have in most welfare systems. So um, uh, in, in most European countries, um, if, if you, if you uh, don't earn any money or if you earn a, you know, a, a very low income, uh, you know, a low wage, it's um, topped up to a certain minimum level. Um, so, you know, uh, if, you, if you're unemployed, you might get 15,000 a year, but then if you earn 10,000, you know, working in a dead-end job, you'll get an extra 5,000. Uh, so you'll get 15,000 a year. And then, of course, uh, you know, a lot of people think, well, in that case, what, why should I work? Um, I mean, you know, better, better do nothing and get 15,000 than work in some crappy job and get 15,000, right, very sensibly. Um, now, basic income would eliminate that, that problem Right, that, that you know, you'd always get more money for working. Um, so you know, it might be expected to actually encourage a lot of people back into the job market, who are at the moment discouraged. Um, so I, I, I don't know how, how these two effects would, would play out. It's, it's, it's very complicated. Um, but it, it might have a negative effect on growth. But I mean, you know, I think the answer to that is, you know, well, you know so what? Um, may even be a good thing, okay, if, if degrowth is our objective. Um, you yeah, know that that's uh, uh, you yeah, that's that's not a problem. I mean, it, it might be a problem if if so many people are are encouraged to leave the job market that, that the revenues out of which basic income itself is funded uh, dry up. Right in that case, basic income would be you know self undermining. Um, but I, I, d I don't think that's likely to happen. I mean, we we, we are talking about a you know a subsistence income. So I think most, most people would want um, to earn a bit more than that. Yeah, thank you. Um, you understand your German as well enough, huh? Then I s switch to German? No. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> no, the, or I... I, 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 yeah, oh yeah, I might... Okay. I might uh, yeah. Ich habe zwei Bemerkungen zu anderen Ausführungen. Dann, ah. yeah. So I start in English and then I switch. Okay. Okay. Um, one point uh, which comes to my mind is what um, Dagmar said, that the refugees would like to live, uh, they come to Europe um, to live a good life. Yeah, but this is, a, uh, without any homogenizing um, uh, um, um, prejudice um, concerning the refugees, but we should not uh, uh, um, underestimate that for many people, mainly here, not the refugees, but many people here, the good living is cars and meat and to fly and to have our own house. So we need to struggle. What is a good life about? It's not clear that a good life is the degrowth or the, ba uh, the basic income life. And so it's, co it's very legitimate that many people from other countries come, as it was with the so-called guest workers in the 60s and 70s, to have a standard of living which is not very sustainable. So we, we need to, this is what, wh why I invent this, this term imperial mode of living, to understand what are the, the, the barriers, the obstacles to really change at the mental, um, uh, political, cultural, economic um, uh, level. And the other, when um, Edward said that the, um, the income of people didn't, didn't increase, um, it, maybe this is a difference, an interesting difference between the United Kingdom and Germany and Austria, yes, it increased. The metal workers just finished their, their negotiations uh, some, week, uh, some days ago, 
and the, the public service workers. And they have a good increase of their wages, so they have something to lose. This is not a cynical argument. This is to consider that we should really be very careful how to judge that people are in crisis, we are in a crisis, and only capital and the powerful, this was not your argument, are trying to, to, to get their, 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 their advantages and, and their profits and so on. No, I would argue that still in Europe, and mainly in the core countries of Europe, there is a lot to, to, to be lost. And this is, I would say, the, the, and then I come to your point. Your, uh, your question concerning um, the gross perspectives or degross perspective on basic income seems to me a, a bit too technical. I would prefer or I would uh, um, suggest a more procedural understanding. And the degrowth perspective does not start to ask how many hours are, are people uh, are going to work or not work with the basic income, but what is the quality of the society we want in public transport or private transport, in housing, how we, what we eat, what are our clothes, how do we communicate. So what is the reproduction, the material reproduction of our society. And th the degrowth perspective argues this goes into a wrong direction because it's uh, uh, not, not sustainable, what I said at the beginning. So when we have this in mind, we should combine the basic income perspective with this, I would say, larger societal perspective. How do we want to organize society? And we cannot say the basic income perspective will change everything. I hope. Sincerely, I hope that uh, the, the introduction of basic income would not change too much because we need a reproduction of our society. We need the work to, to get uh, food, uh, to, to be transported, and so I, I hope that if we, if we um, invent in Austria, in Vienna, the basic income, that there will still be some people work to, to move the, the, the metro and the buses and to, 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 uh, to collect the garbage and to teach and to go as me to the university or to also to, to, to clean the university. So I'm not so familiar with your debates on basic income, but I would suggest, and, and this is the strength of the degrowth perspective, it's a project where we talk about qualities and not about quantities of work hours and of income, of the quality, how do we live together and what goes wrong today and what would we like to change in the midterm and in the long term. And then, I, again, I come to this quality of housing, uh, uh, food, and, and so on. And of course, we need to consider work, but the work is not, is not the, oh yeah, I, I repeat myself, it's not the only thing. Yeah, just, I mean, on, on the uh, issue of work and, and the effect of basic income on work, um, in, in, in the book um, you mentioned, um, which I wrote with my father, How Much Is Enough, or Wie viel ist genug, in German, it's been translated, uh, uh, we quote um, uh, a social critic, Friedhof Bergmann, I think he was called, who, who, who had a very nice phrase. He said, our aim should be to, to liberate work from the tyranny of the job. Um, <laughs> and I, I think that, that expresses very well what um, uh, basic income might achieve, the liberation of work from the tyranny of the job. Because, of course, you know, work is not synonymous with paid work. Um, an awful lot of things we do are, are work, but are not paid. So all forms of housework, forms of caring work, you know, a lot of creative work, charitable work. Um, and this is, this is work, um, so it's not, it's not entertaining. Um, uh, we, we do it because we, we, we feel some need to do it, uh, you know, whether that's you know, practical or ethical. Um, so it's certainly work, but it's, it's, uh, it's not a job. Um, and what I think basic income would, would, would achieve is that people would be able to devote more and more of their waking hours to, to, to work in this, in this sense, um, because they, they wouldn't be so dependent on, on paid work for a but, living. But, but what kind of work? Well, that's up to them. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, they can choose. That, that's the beauty of it. Um, so but Maybe it's a... It's a I, we have the consent that I'm not in favor of fa forced labor or that of the bad jobs or the tyranny of the jobs. But I would like to insist our society has very complex systems and how can we reproduce these complex systems okay, not yeah. and how can we negotiate who does these kind of work? Yeah, I, I agree. I was, you know, we want someone to, to, to run the metro. But and 
maybe you'd have to pay them a bit more to get them to do it, yeah. right? And that, that would be a good thing. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is exactly the procedural uh, aspect I, I, I would like to underline. It's not a technical, of course it's also at the end a technical question, it's a procedural question. How can we maintain the running of the transport system in Hamburg, Berlin, uh, uh, Vienna in the countryside and then to have a process that the people who run the public transport is willing to do the job, maybe not in eight hours, but in four hours, or uh, as Adorno, the, the Frankfurt philosopher said, in a liberal, in an emancipatory society, I'm willing to work for three hours per day as an um, lift, um, 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 to, 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 um, to move the lift. Yeah? Because this is then part of liberating um, uh, the, 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 the power-based, the domination-based uh, division of labor. I'm a philosopher, but I am willing to work three hours, a, a repetitive job. But this is a, a pr procedure. We, I we would come back to the question of competences. Please um, uh, b be happy that I'm not a pilot, yeah? because I don't have the competences to be a pilot. Yeah? So what, how can we change the competences of a of, of our society and uh, me as an as a um, 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 university um, uh, teacher, what competences do we need to train, to give, to educate today that we have a liberal uh, a liberal not a liberal a liberal and emancipatory society in, in 30 years? What competences do we need today in computation, engineering, um, city planning, political science, philosophy that we have really an, um, 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 a good society in 30 years? And this is not a technical question, I, I, I repeat myself, it's a procedural question. And there I would say is the degrowth perspective uh, quite strong. In. Okay, so maybe linking to that, what would, uh, in your opinion, be the next steps uh, in order to implement a universal basic income and also um, democratically introduce it and face uh, the different uh, opponent uh, opinions towards a basic income? Well, I, I think you're, you're d you'd have to do it gradually, obviously, um, uh, uh, and probably start off with local pilot schemes, um, as, as I believe are, are now you know, being run in many places. Um, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to initially set it at the, at the, you know, the, the, um, the level that basic income advocates would like, i.e. a subsistence level. I think it would be considerably lower than that uh, to start with. You'll see what effect that had on working patterns and so forth, and then, so you'd, fa you'd phase it in gradually. Um, there's, a, I mean, one, one of the debates that's taking place is whether it should take the form of a, uh, of a, of a you know, a, a capital um, stake uh, given to all citizens on reaching the age of 18. Um, okay, this was the scheme advocated by Bruce Ackerman in the US. Uh, it, it was, it was um, actually, so something like it was put into effect um, by Gordon Brown, uh, the last um, Prime Minister of the UK, and it was then scrapped by the current government, the so-called baby bond scheme, um, uh, which, um, yeah, I I if it had been allowed to run, e every um, child in the UK would receive a sum of a few thousand pounds on reaching his or her 18th birthday. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is... Um, a, a monthly payout, um, and you know there are um, pros and cons, uh, um, whichever way you do it. Um, and the advantage of giving people a, a capital stake is that they're then free to um, maybe set up a business or buy a home or um, uh, you know pay for college education, something like that. Uh, the, the risk, of course, is that they'll they'll blow it. Um, um, and then they'll have nothing. Um, uh, a, a monthly payment is, is much more secure, um, but um, it, uh, you know, it doesn't give you the same kind of freedom to, to, to invest or, or, or make some big capital purchase. Um, so, um, but you know, the, the, these are technical questions that are debated in the, in the literature. Yeah, very good. I would, uh, again, I, I am uh, very much in favor to think these technical questions and many of you are much more familiar with these debates than I am. And I would compliment, not, not uh, to criticize this important technical aspects, and I'm of course in favor of pilot uh, projects and local initiatives. Again, the procedural one. I suggest that the basic income debate 
and it's already taking place, um, is um, 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 puts itself into the larger context of what we can call it. Dagmar also used the concept of social ecological transformation, different forms of well-being. And a, a, tr a transformative approach means that if we want to transform our society or societies, we need to change a lot, and there is a good debate on it. And one um, um, horizon or one common uh, point of um, to, to get different perspectives together would be different forms of well-being, the good life or the good living, how can we call it? I think the degrowth perspective and the um, basic income perspectives come together here. So, again, I think that to change, to, to, uh, to um, stop the tyranny of work, or the tyranny of the job, is, is crucial, but it needs to be linked to other perspectives. How can we reproduce in a good sense our societies to make, uh, to, to, to make possible a good living um, uh, for everybody? So maybe this is an, uh, and this is, uh, I think, the reason why you invited me to bring this degrowth perspective here a bit up, to link it and to say there is an interesting debate. I was a member of the Enquete Commission of the German Bundestag, uh, um, Wachstum, Wohlstand, Lebensqualität, Growth, Wellbeing, and Quality of Life. Yeah? And we discussed there in the red, red, green, in, in this time in the opposition, um, uh, parts, uh, um, 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 uh, groups, they try to converge under the heading social ecological transformation and emancipatory or progressive forms of well-being. And to put into this larger framework the uh, basic income uh, uh, demand or, or perspective, this makes sense to me. Okay, maybe finally, just before the break that we're going to have, uh, what about like the, the European perspective, like what uh, Ulrike Guerreau um, mentioned, so what kind of transformative potential do you see uh, of the basic income within uh, Europe? Yeah, well, I mean, one, one problem, of course, uh, um, with, um, <laughs> I, I won't cover that, is, um, yeah, I mean, who, who, who does the basic income get paid to? Is it just citizens or... Would would um, you know migrant workers who've lived in the country for a number of years also be entitled to it? Um, I mean, so yeah. I mean, um, I, I mean, one could one could see that if it was introduced differentially across the EU, that would lead to big tensions. So perhaps it would have to be um, you know rolled out on a European scale. Um, uh, although I mean, I, I don't see. Uh, the countries of Europe cooperating on something like that at the moment. So, yeah, I think, um, uh, um, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it, it, um, I, I don't have answers to these questions. I'm just raising them. I think this is the wrong question currently. To ask for Europe for a basic income needs to hide the question how to finance it when Europe is in such a crisis. And... Uh, I like the title of the session, this is social security. And we need urgently initiatives to create, to enhance, to stabilize social security. And in some countries like Germany or Austria or the Netherlands, basic income initiatives make sense. But also then we have to think what is the, where the money comes from, from a capitalist machinery. Still, yeah. So, what is this? This is why I insist on this transformative perspective. We need to transform the the, the, the production systems, and then we can we can also um, distribute um, and, and secure basic income in a more solidarity way. But for Europe to ask the question for basic income, to me, please uh, um, um, correct me, does not make sense in such a crisis. It m has to be um, at the cost of others if the European does not put the money, because the European Union does not have the money to, to assure the basic income. The basic income is still a question at the national scale. And it's discussed probably, you come from many countries here, but probably um, as a basic income, an unconditional um, um, conditional basic income in the richer countries. So I would insist it must be a debate in initiatives on social security and there comes the national scale and also the European scale. It's a disaster what, for the Europeans, for the European Union, what happens in Spain and Greece and elsewhere. Yeah? So the European Union needs to, not to intervene, please, but needs to, needs to, uh, to, uh, to um, support the maintenance 
and enhancement of social security also in Greece and, 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 and Spain and elsewhere. But this, I would say, is, the, is the, the central point, social security and not basic income. Okay, thank you very much. I've seen some people nodding, some people shaking their heads. So uh, please make up your mind uh, on what you would like to contribute after the break because then we're going to have a fishbowl here with the two speakers uh, and the empty chairs can be filled by you. So those who have already know that they uh, feel the, the urge to say something uh, after the break, maybe you already take a seat in the front, uh, front line. Um, yes, that would be it. And I think now, um, yeah, we're going to have a break of 15 minutes and then we hope to see you all back to have an uh, interesting discussion.